Welcome to the Diversity Pivot Podcast. I'm your host, Julie Kratz. I am thrilled you are here with us today. Our purpose is to share stories, ideas, and tools to help you on your diversity, equity, and inclusion journey. Let's meet this week's guest. Welcome back, listeners. I'm so excited to be with you again. We're kicking off season 11 next week. But before we did that, I wanted to drop in a hot topic because I'm hearing a lot of organizations brace yet again uh, for uncertainty, uh, the infamous R word, which I'm not even going to say out loud (laughs) to bring more attention to the economy. But this stuff is real. And if there's anything we've learned about the beginning of 2023, is that uncertainty is the new certainty. Business, uh, markets, uh, employment, (laughs) employees, attitudes. While we are strife with a lot of polarization, I think organizations are really struggling to figure out what's next on the diversity, equity, and inclusion journey. And that's why I wanted to talk briefly with you today and do a quick overview of season 11 and what to expect. We're already interviewing some amazing guests that we'll be bringing back to you this spring every week. Uh, And that's a promise that I'm excited. Uh, There's some really important people that we're talking with this season that I have followed for years. And so I have a bit of a, a fan moment on how, you know, how it's so amazing, um, the work we get to do. But back to the hot topic this week, budget cuts, (laughs) budget cuts. So if your organization has slashed their DEI budget, their training budget, their HR budget, you name it, you know, diversity work, gotta be creative with where we find the funds. They're cutting those budgets, bracing, you know, for uncertainty. And it feels like a nice to have these employee events, employee resource groups, diversity training, etc. The problem is that when we make budget cuts, we are signaling, not even signaling, we are declaring our values, our priorities, our beliefs. So when employees see DEI positions, training, programming be cut in economic uncertainty, the message they are taking away resoundingly clear and fairly so is that it is not important here. It is important when it's in the news cycle and we want to make sure to save face and do the right public relations thing, statements, donations, etc. But when it's not so prominent, we can back off. And why this is harmful, I think, for folks in the diversity work is obvious. Um, But maybe for C-suite leaders, folks that make the budget decisions that are removed from diversity work, it might just feel like a line item that we can, you know, turn off and turn back on again. Uh, Unfortunately, diversity work is not an on-off switch. It is an intentional, consistent set of behaviors over time. And so what I wanted to bring to you was just if you're having trouble convincing folks of why to keep the budget or arguing for budget from another area and getting creative, or if you are a C-suite leader in charge of budgets, please consider some of this information. One, I think it's the strongest uh, data points that we have is that DEI has one of the best long-term return on investments. Now, it's a long-term return on investment. It's not like sales training where you're hoping to get a bump next week, which I would argue doesn't usually happen. <laughs> it, it's it's more of an R&D investment, right? and it's a research and development long-term play. But the certainty of the investment is much more clear than something like an R&D investment because we know inclusive teams make better decisions 87% of the time. Firms with more diverse management teams have 19% higher revenue rates and gender and racial diversity alone lifts profitability rates at a 20 to 36% higher rate. All this data is well backed by Forbes, Pew Research Center, McKinsey and Company, etc. So you can find that in our show notes. We will link to these studies. What other area of your business can produce these types of returns? And that's the question I ask leaders. Tell me something else on a line item on the budget that can bring that kind of return. And it's probably hard to find. And it's certainly not certain like study after study after study has proven the business case. But I think the business case is a little tired. 
And the reason I say that is because it's been around a long time and not a lot of changes occurred, especially with representation even over the last few years. Younger generations, <laughs> so us millennials, Gen Zers, expect DEI and see it as a non-negotiable when evaluating their employment and buying decisions. In fact, uh, they, they have declared that it is the key priority when deciding amongst competitive offers with companies. And it's also how they vote with their dollars and how they choose to spend money. Now is also the time for accountability with DEI. So 95% of CEOs actually believe DEI is a, is a priority. The bad news, though, is that only 44% have actually developed a formal actionable strategy. And as of late last year, 55% of HR managers have either had their budget slashed already or expect them to be cut going into 2023. So you see what we see from the data here is that only 80% 80% of companies actually, (laughs) a big number, um, are just kind of going through the motions without actually holding themselves accountable to long-term change. That means they're not measuring it. So one of the key things to demonstrate that strong ROI, because usually that ROI is not tracked inside organizations, so it's easy to slash the budget. Let's track it better. And it doesn't have to be this long, lengthy exercise with algorithms. There are great tools out there. And so we recommend that organizations invest 2 to 3% of their operating budget in DEI annually. Most of that is on education, but I would argue measure it across the employee life cycle. So what do I mean by that? Boston Consulting Group says we need to measure the recruiting phase, the retention phase, the advancement phase, the representation phase, and the pay phase. So it's the holistic experience that we're looking for. And one tool that we use, we partner with an organization, Spectra Diversity, woman-led organization, um, that's been around for a long time, since 2017, and they've been accumulating data on these very experiences that employees are having inside the organization. What's unique about their assessment and why we're partnering with them is because you can get an individual snapshot as well as a group snapshot. The group snapshot breaks down by multiple dimensions of diversity, not just race and gender, but disability, veteran, um, LGBTQ+, et cetera. And so you can really understand the nuances of the employee experience from multiple angles. So the question I'll leave you with today (laughs) is how might your organization fare on an assessment like that? You know, think about some of these statements. I take the time to learn how those different from me want to be treated. How would people at your organization rate that? Diversity and inclusion efforts are necessary to this organization's success. How would you rate that? You know, our assessment only takes 10 minutes and it can be easily done, um, just like a pulse survey um, or an employee engagement survey. And it is different than those um, assessments, but important. Once you have the data, then you can make strategic decisions about priorities and leverage that budget to then go back and measure again and show, hey, we improved these behaviors. What's that worth to us? And that's the question I think we need to be having. Uh, I'll link to um, that data in the show notes. If you want to check that out, um, I'd encourage you to uh, continue to listen to season 11. Uh, We've got some fantastic guests that are going to bring, you know, the future, what we're seeing, the crystal ball for DEI. It's not going away. Despite these short-term budget cuts, do not get discouraged. I know that it will come back. This is a short-term uncertainty decision. So stay with us this season. We're going to bring you some optimistic, hot topics in the diversity space. And I'm so thankful for you listening. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If you like what you heard, consider hiring Julie and the Next Pivot Point team to come speak at your organization's next event. We speak on a range of topics from active allyship to inclusive leadership to how to create a culture where everyone feels seen, heard, and feels a sense of belonging. Thank you for being on this journey with us. Go to nextpivotpoint.com to learn more.